Overcoming the Innovation Divide – How we can move away from pilosis to true scale. This is a big face of me and then um, is the real face as well. You're going to have about 10-15 minutes of my German Schwarzenegger imitation. So I'm from Germany, as you can tell. And, um, but I live in the UK uh, 14 years now. And that's me. So you can connect and all that stuff, um, what you want. So what I want to talk about today, let me go back. What I want to talk about today is I want to give you an impression of what the NIA, which is the NHS Innovation Accelerator, what do we do, why we're here, um, and why we're here as well. So that's, that's one thing. And then the other thing is um, I want to talk about how do we stop what we call pilotitis. And a lot of um, companies that are here today in the startup and scale up, they love pilots. Um, why? Because they are funded through different means. You can just do it, you have a funding envelope and then you're done and you can walk away. The difficult thing in not just the NHS, in any health system is scale. So pilots, everybody can do, the rest is really, really difficult. And we've came up with a way of how to actually tackle some of that stuff. So just quickly around the NIA, because I'm going to stop saying NHS Innovation Accelerator because that takes away my time. So it will be the NIA. It is um, a program that is commissioned by NHS England. Um, for people that don't know the NHS, that's um, essentially the health system in the um, UK. It's a publicly owned health system. We're very proud of it that we have that. And it's delivered in partnership with um, what we call academic health and science networks. Don't need to remember that because they're going to be renamed uh, into health innovation networks soon. So there you go. And also, um, we work with the Department of Health and Social Care. We work with, <clears throat> with industry. We work with the ABPI, which is the Association for British Pharmaceutical Industry. So we work across. But what is it? It's a fellowship program, essentially, for three years. It's free to join. We never take equity and we never charge. It's taxpayer funded. And I think that's a key differentiator to a lot of, well, all of the other accelerator and incubator programs that are out there that are venture fund driven. We are interested in supporting our fellows in scaling their solution in the NHS for patient and staff impact. And we do that by giving them support for three years, but ultimately support and having a, a learning session and learning around procurement and learning around um, the best pathway into the NHS is one thing. But whenever we talk to our fellows, we have 34 now on the program, they're all digital health. The one thing that is important is, how do I get my stuff into the NHS and how do I scale it? That's the only thing that matters because these people have businesses and they need to survive, right? Um, they're not funded by the NHS. These are some uh, fancy numbers um, that I'm gonna just leave there. But I think um, one is really impressive, which is the number of jobs created. Because that is one of our key pieces, is how do we create employment in the UK? We want to help those companies grow, of course. Because if you have a sustainable growing startup, you create jobs, you create income tax in the UK, and ultimately you pay back the resources that you've put in into the, um, into the system. So we live in this space now of this technology-enabled and me-first society, right? Um, we're all carrying around phones. We're all wanting to own our own health. We think we do, but actually we don't. And we also live in a society where we think everything is possible. And we're witnessing a different area of a combination of various different factors. And you all know this, right? So we have the conscious patient, which is all of us. We've got technology, and we also have a challenged healthcare market. Why challenged? Because there's no more money in the system. There's too, ma there's too many patients, right? There's too many of us we can't serve them. So and that is a, an extreme big problem, of course. And from an NIA standpoint, we're trying to address some of this stuff by being really streamlined and by trying to offer to the health system in the UK, but also internationally, solutions that have legs, generally speaking. 
So this is a bit of a of a impression. So actually, the the 520,000 Malta inhabitants didn't even make it on the slide. I just there's a little slither slither over there because it's not that many. Um, but we've got 8.2 million cancer patients that are dying, we've got cardiovascular disease, we've got respiratory disease, and we've got one point billion patients in the world that live, that have chronic pain. So the big question is, how do these guys can actually help them? And if you compare the numbers, it's ridiculous, right? So all of those healthcare providers need to serve all of those patients. And what we need for that what we need for them to be able to do that is in automation, is in digital health, and it's really trying to create impact. So this, I love this slide. I love one of my own slides, I know. So this is the thing that everybody wants, but it doesn't exist. Um, and why doesn't it, it exist? Because of red tape, because of uh, inertia in the system. We just had a, um, a panel around digital health in primary care. You know, I don't, primary care is one of the most stagnant spaces for digital health. Not much has moved apart from appointment booking and digital prescribing. That's it, right? So there is not much moving. And from an NIA standpoint, uh, for example, we forged, and people from the UK might know this, um, a partnership with uh, Modality, which is England's largest primary care partnership. And because we want to push that innovation agenda in primary care. But coming back to this funny animal, so sometimes it does feel like we do this all the time, right? So we're pushing this massive rock up a hill. And, and this massive rock, you could write the word pilot over that as well, coming back to the initial piece. And why, why am I so adverse to pilots? <laughs> because a pilot is essentially the driver for the wrong funding mechanism in healthcare. It's just wrong, wrong, wrong. Because we are, we are incentivizing people to run one pilot after another, have no consideration of how to scale this thing. But why? Because a lot of digital health startups and scale-ups actually jump from one pilot to another, from one financed accelerator to another. The NIA is one of them, right? And then you check back in five, 10 years later, they still haven't grown. There's no sustainable business, but the taxpayers spend a huge amount of money on them. So in the UK, we've got as much as here, and in the US, we've got taxpayer-funded um, programs where people can get hundreds of thousands of uh, pounds, dollars, or euros to run pilots and to learn, test, and all that stuff. But essentially, it doesn't work. What we need to have in our healthcare system is a bit more socialism. I'm from East Germany, I can say that, I grew up there. So why socialism? Essentially, you need to cut down the number of providers that provide solutions, which is horrible for all of you to hear, because we're gonna cut you out of business. But ultimately, do we need 20 companies that all do the same thing for, uh, for patient reported outcome management? We don't, because you all do the same thing. We need three of you. Right? And then the various health systems, integrated care systems, or hospitals, whoever, they can choose one out of those three that have maturity, that are stable as a business, and that can scale now. Not in five years, now. So that's why, um, I'm not showing you everything, but that's why we came up what we call um, the maturity matrix. And this is sort of the answer to that pilotitis, pilotitis um, piece in the NHS. What we do is we've developed together with the Department of Health and Social Care, so that's government, as well as NHS England, we developed an approach of how to foster scale in the NHS. Us as a program, we're supporting companies in their maturity journey, but ultimately you should only be able to access the NHS fully on a national level or even regionally if you're in, cat in the last category four where you have all the things in place, and some of the things I cut out there is um, real-world evidence, but clinical practice evidence, like with tens of thousands or with lots of patients, basically. But some of that stuff is also, have you actually involved patients in the development of your solution? Because lots of people haven't. It's two or three people 
that develop something, they think it works, they spoke to venture capitalists, to people in system, and they saw the great idea, but nobody asked the patient what they need, what they want, patient experience with the solution. So that's for us is key. In the UK it's called PPIE, patient public involvement or something. I don't know the fourth letter. But there's much more to this. And what we do is we look at how mature is a company and we're only going to support adoption and spread in the NHS, nationally or regional, if somebody's in category four. Before that, no. Why? Because we want to cut down the pilots. The house is on fire now, right? So we need to get the fire engine out now and not in five years' time. See, I'm on time. No, I'm not, or whatever. I'm probably the only one that's the German efficiency who makes it in 10 minutes. So you can reach out to me. I'm on, of course, the famous LinkedIn. One last thing, what we're after in the NIA, until the 22nd of October, which is Sunday, we're still recruiting for our new 2024 intake of startups. You can apply from wherever you are in the world. You need to have a UK entity planned or set up already. You need to have real world evidence. Your thing needs to work. It can't be a pilot somewhere. It needs to be there. So a mature enough solution. And until the 22nd of October, you can apply on just Google NIA NHS. Four, I know six letters, which I'm sure people can remember. NIA, NHS, and then the apl application page will come up. Um, do, I don't know if there's questions. Do we have time? We don't. But thank you so much for listening.